Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. It looks like a, a delay on my end. Um, I'm going to give everyone about a few seconds to join us. So I want to say thank you on behalf of MSEC um, for registering for today's session. So we have a few people joining. Thank you. Feel free to introduce yourself with every opportunity to connect, whether it's virtual or in person, it's opportunity to engage. So feel free to introduce yourself and your business. We love to know what services and products are in the room. So thank you for joining us. You can utilize the chat for that. So. All right. So we want to thank everyone for joining today. Uh, my name is Aaliyah Bunch. I'm Eastern Minority Supplier Development Council's Director of MBE Services. Uh, we're super excited on our second day of Road to Roar. So we want to thank all of our registrants and attendees for joining today's session um, called Fit for the Funders. We're basically going to be providing an overview of the products and services offered by our dynamic resource partners and the SBA, um, Small Business Administration. Um, so we have our guest speaker on here today. So excited to connect you guys with Ms. Kimberly Stout. She'll be able to tell you a little bit more about her background and which part of the SBA region um, she covers and serves. Um, but just to give you guys a little overview, um, we will be doing our war conference next week. So we are happy to offer you a few of these free virtual sessions from 12 to 1. Uh, yesterday, we, if you're looking for uh, information on what we had, yesterday's networking um, session was pretty dynamic. Um, today, we were with the SBA. Tomorrow, we'll be having a finance advisor, Ms. Ange Matthews. So please go register for that free session if you haven't done. So um, let you know the language let you know a little bit about how to speak with our corporate procurement professionals in regards to finances, pay cycles, and things of that sort. Um, so again, my name is Aaliyah. We have Meg on the call, uh, Brittany from our team. Um, so feel free to keep back with us and keep us posted on your goals um, and how we could better support your objectives here with the council. So with that being said, with this hour session, we'll be doing an overview um, you can feel free to ask any questions in the chat. Um, I, I'm not sure if we have our Q&A feature. We do available as well. Um, Ms. Kim has uh, been well acquainted with the SBA for some time, so she'll be able to give you feedback on all the resources, who to contact, um, any information you're looking for getting more of within the SBA. So I'm going to turn it over to Kim. Thank you again for joining us. And uh, please let us know in the chat if there's anything we could do to service you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Leah. I really appreciate being invited to speak here today. Um, I will be going through the overview of the SBA, and I'll stop every once in a while to check the um, chat and just look for questions and so forth. But please feel free to interrupt me. I'm more than happy to make this more of a conversation versus me speaking the entire time. So with me doing that, I just wanna make sure that I haven't seen anything in here yet. Um, but like I said, I will stop um, throughout the presentation to answer any questions that pop up. Um, as Aliyah said, my name is Kim Stout. I'm with the U.S. Small Business Administration. I'm out of the Eastern Pennsylvania District Office. So our district office physically sits in uh, King of Prussia, but we cover the 40 eastern counties of Pennsylvania. So we go from Philadelphia out to Fulton County, um, straight up around Center County where Penn State is to the New York border, and then back over to New Jersey. So within those 40 counties, um, we're more than happy to, to serve our small businesses. Um, that need any assistance. If you are outside of that area, Jersey, Delaware, um, et cetera, we do have 68 district offices across the, the country. Um, so please reach out and I'll be more than happy to put you in touch with the district office that is closest to you. 
Um, today, we're just going to talk a little bit about what does SBA do, what are the services that we provide. Um, when I talk about the SBA, um, you know, it's really, a, we are a federal agency that supports small businesses, but we work with small businesses from every stage of life. Um, if you're interested in starting a business, we have lots of resources to help with that. Um, growing, expanding your business. Um, if you've been, you know, we typically consider a startup two years or less, um, having two years of tax returns or get less as a, as a startup. Um, but as you're growing your businesses and you have questions uh, about different things like marketing, government contracting, um, exporting, you can reach out to us and we can put you um, in touch with the resources if it's something that we're not able to help you directly with. Um, the last bullet point that you see there there at, on my slide is recover. Um, with recovery, uh, that wasn't something that I really spent a lot of time with until COVID idle hit, uh, or I'm sorry, the COVID uh, pandemic hit and we created our COVID economic injury disaster loan, idle, or other programs to support small businesses. So I'll dive into that a little bit later, but just keep in mind that if you are a small business owner, um, if you have a disaster around you, SBA might be coming in to help with that as well. Um, so as the Small Business Administration, we have several SBA partners um, that the SBA helps fund so that they could provide what we refer to as technical assistance to our small businesses. Um, these organizations are local and across the country and available to you at no cost. Um, the reason that we fund these particular partners is because we don't have enough um, people really in our in our building in our office to touch the millions of small businesses in our area um so whenever somebody needs additional technical assistance they need support mentoring um counseling um somebody to look at their business plan we do refer small businesses to reach out to our partners the one partner that i want to mention first is score so score is a nonprofit organization and it has volunteers that vol that mentor small businesses. So in Eastern Pennsylvania, we have 11 chapters. Um, you would just have to go to score.org, put in your zip code and find the chapter that's closest to you. SCORE is a great resource to have um, a small business consultant, so to speak, in your back pocket that you don't have to pay for. The services that you receive from SCORE are at no cost to you. Um, so if you wanna have a mentor, if you want to have somebody that you can talk about the struggles that you're having or to help get some uh, advice or to find some technical assistance in like marketing, um, building your business plan, or just to have some help with an advisory board, um, this is a really good organization um, to reach out to. Again, it's at no cost to you um, locally here in Eastern Pennsylvania. The um, chapters come together and offer free online workshops every Tuesday and Thursday around the lunchtime hour on a variety of topics such as AI, marketing, um, you know, anything that that's trending in the in the workforce, um, you know, things like that so that you can get information and stay up to date with that. Another partner of ours are the Small Business Development Centers. There are 15 of them across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and they're typically associated with universities. Um, outside the Philadelphia area, we have Temple University, Widener University, Lehigh University, Kutztown University. Those are serving like the, the, the Philadelphia area and counties surrounding it, um, but we do have 15 small business development centers across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, as I had said. What's great about the small business development centers is that they are similar to SCORE where they help mentor and consult with small businesses, but the small business development centers are actually um, situated with colleges or universities. So many times they actually utilize their grad students and undergraduate students to help them do um, technical assistance for small businesses. For example, um, I work closely with the area that I cover. I work closely with Kutztown University Small Business Development Center. 
they have 20 plus graduates and, and undergraduates that are helping small businesses do research for their small businesses, um, marketing analysis, analysis, industry analysis, things like that. They also have programs like um, a digital marketing program that they look at small businesses, digital marketing and provide them with um, information about how their digital marketing is working, what they could tweak for you, um, et cetera. So the resources that these small business development centers are able to provide to you um, are, are like very, very helpful and provide you the opportunity to dig deeper into information that you're looking for without you having to do it yourself as you're running your small business. And I just wanted to look up here real quickly and see if that was a question or not that came through here. So it doesn't look like it, but yes, um, the Small Business Development Center is another great resource at no cost to you. We also have three women's business centers here in Pennsylvania. One of them is in Philadelphia, the um, Webeck East. Our women's business centers are focused on working with women entrepreneurs. They do not discriminate. They do work with all entrepreneurs, um, but they do receive funding from the Small Business Administration to focus specifically on programs for women entrepreneurs. Um, they want to make sure that the women entrepreneurs have resources available to them, trainings on a variety of topics, um, and they also provide consulting in different languages as well. Um, all, with me saying all this, these resource set, um, partners of ours typically work together um, and collaborate. So you can use one resource partner or you can use all of them. Um, you know, it doesn't matter. We try to collaborate. And if there's something that um, SCORE can offer that the SBDCs can't, they'll send the client back and forth to make sure that you get all of the resources and help that you could possibly need. We also have um, um, assistance for veterans with our Veteran Business Outreach Center. Um, until recently, the University of Maryland was the closest Veteran Business Outreach Center that we have, um, but the good news is um, in 2025, um, our fiscal year starts October 21, um, I'm sorry, October 1st, we actually will have a Veterans Business Outreach Center here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So we're super excited about that. Um, they are focused on veterans and the veteran families and helping their businesses get started um, and also grow their businesses as they go through um, the process. If you're not one to uh, reach out to for mentorship, we do have a variety of online courses that can help small businesses, whether you're in the early stages of getting started or if you're looking to grow your business and get additional resources. So if you go to sba.gov, the Learning Center is there. You can click on it and find um, hundreds of videos, um, learning um, courses, et cetera, to help your small business. Now, this is a program that's close to my heart. I'm actually the program manager for our Thrive program. This program is for existing businesses that have been around for um, at least three years, have a revenue of $250,000 or more, and one employee other than yourself as the owner. Um, this program, Thrive, is a six-month program where we work with our small businesses um, who have been selected to come into the cohort for six months. So there's online courses and in-person sessions uh, that the ultimate goal is to develop a three-year strategic plan. Um, a lot of the times when somebody comes into this course, they're kind of on the fence. Um, maybe they're a family-owned business and the parents are getting ready to retire and the children are going to be taking over and they need to figure figure out strategically how that's going to look. Um, or, you know, you've just been on in business for a while and you need some help. So this is like a deep dive over six months into looking at all aspects of your business and seeing where you can, um, what strategic plans, where you can improve. Uh, we look at finance, we look at marketing, we look at everything to make sure that you're going to be a sustainable business. Our SBA websites are also very helpful. Um, you know, if you're looking for additional training and areas to learn more about, um, if you go to sba.gov slash PA, you'll be able to find our calendar of events. 
we allow all of our resource partners through the SBA to put their um, information about events, trainings, et cetera, so that our small businesses can find more areas of where you can learn and hear more about um, information. I know AI is a really big topic right now, so there's lots of information out there about how small businesses can use ID, um, AI you know, the pros and cons, et cetera. But there's also information about our government contracting workshops, things like that as well. Okay, so one of the areas that you can help grow your small business is actually in federal government contracting. Um, when I'm talking to a small business who is considering going into the federal contracting world, um, you know, we just want to make sure that they're comfortable and they understand that this may take, take some time. Um, the U.S. federal government is the world's largest customer when and we buy all kinds of products and services. Um, so when you are a small business owner, if you want to um, get into government contracting, we have opportunity for you to learn how to do so. Um, we do trainings at least once a month in our office of how to um, do federal government contracting as well as for our certifications. We want to make sure before you spend the time um, getting into this market that you have the knowledge, the capacity to fulfill a contract. Um, so we want to make sure you have that education ahead of time. Um, our workshops are typically the fourth Thursday of every month. Um, again, going back to sba.gov slash PA, our government, um, our event calendar will show you how to do that um, and sign up for how to do business with the federal government. With the federal government, you know, it might be that a certification is a good way, is a good thing to acquire um, before you get into contracts, because with the SBA, we work with our federal agencies to make sure that at least 23% of all prime government contracting dollars go to small businesses. And whenever somebody has a certification, that's like an extra bonus to the to the um, federal contractor um, to say, okay, well, not only do I have a small business, but I have an 8A small business. So so that kind of just uh, encourages, you know, the, the contractor to hire the business with the certification, um, you know, so that they have the opportunity to award um, the contract to a disadvantaged business of some sort. The four certifications that the SBA actually will, uh, that actually holds, there are other certifications out there. However, for the SBA certifications, um, there's four of them. One would be 8A. We have the Hub Zone, the Historically Underutilized Business Zone. We have the Woman Owned Small Business Certification, and we have our Veteran Owned. Um, 8A is a nine year program that small businesses that um, are socially and economically disadvantaged might be eligible for. This nine year program is a business development program where we help the small business develop their market into government contracting. So if you are socially and economically disadvantaged, um, this there's a formal application process. Um, it is there's a lot of paperwork involved, and it is time consuming. And I do believe it's taking about eight months, or I'm sorry, six months to get through the actual certification to receive um, the 8A certification. Um, however, very you know the the small businesses that have this certification, you know, when a federal contractor is going through um, the RFPs and they see that. That's one of the things that they highlight to say, OK, not only could, it, could this be a small business, but we could also award, like I said earlier, to an 8A. Um, there's a lot of um, technical assistance that goes along with this particular certification to make sure the small business knows how to use it and then graduate in nine years. Once you go through the 8A program, you are not able to go through it again. You can only go through that program once. The second program is our hub zone, historically underutilized business zone. Um, so this is for small businesses that locate in a historically underutilized business zone um, and also hire um, a certain percentage of employees from a hub zone as well. Um, to figure out if you are in a hub zone or not, you can go to the SBA website um, or go to certified.sba.gov. 
um, once you get into the hub zone area, once you put in your address, it will show whether or not it, you are in a hub zone. Um, but there are two requirements with that. One, location, and two, you have to be able to hire um, from the hub zone area as well. Doesn't have to be the same hub zone that you're located in, but you're 30, I think it's 33% of your employees, something like that, that has to be from the hub zone. Their third one listed there is the woman-owned small business certification. Um, the woman-owned small business it has to be owned and controlled at least 51% by the female. Um, it can't be where a male says that the woman has 51%, but he's the one controller. The woman-owned small business certification, it has to be 51% owned and controlled where the female owner knows the ins and outs of the business, making decisions on a daily basis, is physically present, things along those lines. Um, you can get third party certified for the W, own, um, the woman owned small business certification, um, and more information can be found on that at certified.sba.gov. The last one I have listed there is the veteran-owned small business um, certification. Very similar to the woman-owned, um, the veteran has to own at least 51% of the business um, to be considered veteran-owned. Um, so these are all the four um, certifications that the SBA offers. Uh, like I said, there are others, um, you know, maybe the, the Commonwealth, I know the Commonwealth has different cert certifications, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, um, certificate, uh, corporations may look for certifications, et cetera. Um, but these are the ones that the SBA oversees, and you can look um, online for more information or contact us. We have two business opportunity specialists in my office. Um, we do the monthly workshops, and then they can help you through the process as well. And with that, I think I'm going to just take a few seconds here to see if there are any questions. Um, I don't see anything in the chat, but, you know, just wanted to take a step back because I've been talking for a while and see if anybody has any questions. Let's see uh, here. Hi, Kim. There is a question in the Q&A. Mm -hmm. It says, are you able to share an update on when my SBA certification applications will be available? It looks like they're still in development. Uh, yes, I don't have an update as to when the website's going to be completed um, and that's going to be processed. I do keep checking in with my business opportunity specialist in my office. Um, they don't have a date. They, I, we were told September is when it would be down. Um, we're still in September, so maybe hopefully in another week it will be up and running. Um, excuse me, but if you want to just check back um, randomly, but we were told it would be down through the month of September. I think that was the only other question in there, correct? Um, yes. The other question I will be answering in the chat. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Yep. Um, for additional help with government contracting and ex um, certifications, we do work closely with our APEX accelerators. Um, our APEX accelerators have been renamed. Um, we have known them as Procurement Technical Assistance Centers. Um, they provide assistance in guiding small businesses on how to do business with the federal government, the state government, and the local government as well as the certifications. So the SBA, because we're a federal agency, we work on how to do business with the federal government. Um, but luckily our APEX accelerators are able to help with the concentration on state and local. As a small business, you may not have the capacity to work on the federal level, but maybe your local municipality is something that you could provide services or um, products to or um, you know, your state government. So working with an APEX accelerator is also very valuable because they can help layer um, the different types of contracts that are out there for you as well. And make sure that you're registered in the proper places too. Okay. I'm not gonna go into this too much, um, but with uh, 
government contracting, if you need a surety bond um, to, to fulfill that contract, the SBA does have programs to help you find somebody to provide that bond to you. Um, so if you um, are looking to, if you need to qualify for one, please go to sba.gov slash surety bonds um, for more information. And you could always reach out to us at the district office if this is something that you come across and have a need for. One of the other areas that you can expand um, your markets into would be international trade or exporting. Um, a lot of small businesses, especially with um, e-commerce and, and just the way that we do business now, don't realize sometimes that they are actually exporting. If you're you know, providing a service to somebody who is like a consulting service to somebody in Canada, that's actually considered an export. Um, so we do want to make sure that you know that there are resources out there to help build international business. Um, there's also loan programs out there to support this as well. As you can see on the slide there, you know, nearly 96% of consumers live outside of the U.S. and two thirds of the world's purchasing power is in foreign countries. Um, so, you know, we love to buy local. We love to support the small businesses here in the U.S. Have you considered at your markets being outside of where you're currently living or have your business housed. Um, you know, that's a question that we always ask people is, do you export? Um, if you are, you know, something like um, a, a consultant for website designs, and maybe you have a, a business that you do designs for in Canada or Mexico or France, um, you are considered an exporter. Um, also, if you manufacture something, and let's say you match, manufacture some kind of widget and that widget then goes to uh, a, another manufacturer here in the US, they build a bigger product with that widget and they export. You are considered an indirect exporter. So um, there's pro uh, programs available for you as well. We work with a number of partners um, to help build international trade um, through the World Trade Center, um, through the Department of Commerce, you know, those types of resources to help you better understand how to be competitive when you are sending your products and services outside of the U.S. Um, we also have a program currently called STEP, the State Trade Expansion Programs. This is a grant that's available to small businesses as they develop their, their international trade markets, and they can help um, cover some of the costs of you going back and forth from the U.S. to whatever country um, to help develop that um, those markets for you. Go back here to the Q&A. All right, we'll go through there. Okay. Most people know the Small Business Administration for our loan programs. Um, that's typically where I sit most of my time is working with individuals and working with our lenders to better understand um, how to acquire a small business loan. Um, when I'm working with small businesses, I do let them know that, you know, don't go into a lender asking for an SBA loan, let the SBA, or I'm sorry, let the loan officer determine what loan product is best for you and educate you on the different products that they do have. Um, I'm a former small business owner. So when I was purchasing an existing business um, at the time, um, I had experience in the industry, but I had never been a business owner before. Um, you know, it was a risky industry because it was in the restaurant world. Um, so even though everything fit well and the bank thought that it was going to be a, a profitable, sustainable business um, because of my lack of experience, but also um, the fact that it was in a risky industry, they uh, approved me for an SBA loan. Um, all that meant was that with the loan, um, the bank got a guarantee, basically like an insurance policy saying that if I, the borrower, defaulted, the bank would receive up to 85% of that money back. Me as the borrower, I would end up owing the federal government um, that money if I went into default. But luckily it all worked out well, sold the business long ago um, and everything was good. But I never have, would have received that funding if the SBA didn't back it. So we do have a lot of different programs available. 
Um, we are not a direct lender, so you don't come to the SBA asking for a loan, with the exception of disaster loans. Um, when you're looking at um, acquiring funds as a small business, I ask a lot of questions. What's the money going to? Do you have a business plan? How much do you need? What's your credit? All of those types of things to help determine what type of lender may be best for you. One other suggestion I always give is to talk to the lending institution that you already do business with um, to see if they are willing to provide you with the loan funds. Um, it's easy that way because they already know you, you have your bank account, they have an understanding of what you do. But if for some reason they're not able to, there's lots of other opportunities um, to reach out to other lending institutions. At the district office, we stay in contact with our um, SBA lenders. We know what they're looking for when it comes to a borrower. We know what appetite they have, whether or not they'll provide capital to startups, um, how much you know a minimum balance or a minimum loan request would be, things like that. Um, so I always tell people that, you know, if you're looking for money and you're having a hard time finding it, um, feel free to reach out, provide me with information, and I'll see what I can do to find a lender um, that's willing to have a conversation with you. We have a variety of lenders. One would be our micro lenders. Um, as you see here, um, you know, we have micro lenders that are typically nonprofit lending institutions community financial institutions, community development financial institutions who have a mission to give back to their community. Microloans are $50,000 or less. Um, they do have a slightly higher interest rate because they receive the loan funds from the SBA to give loans out to the community. Um, so there's a cost of goods, a cost of um, funds that goes along with that. Um, also with microloans, these are loans for people who are not bankable meaning that if you've gone to the bank, you don't have the credit score, you don't have this, you don't have that, and the bank cannot fund you. Our micro lenders are there as a backup um, to work through that process. But like I said, the maximum is 50,000. Um, you do receive technical assistance along with your micro loan, meaning that there's somebody at the CDFI who's providing you that one-on-one -on -one assistance, um, helping you make sure that you're sustaining a, a business, making being and being able to make that payment back. The loan that I was talking about that I received was considered our SBA 7A loan. Um, that's what we're mostly known for. Um, this is a really flexible loan program that provides um, funding to small businesses for almost any legitimate small business use. There's about uh, eight to 10 things that we will not lend towards. Um, illegal activities, um, anything in the marijuana world is not federally approved, so we can't do that. Um, you know, there are a list of things that we cannot fund. Um, however, if you are a legitimate small business, most likely you're eligible for a 7A loan. And there's a lot of flexibility with how you can use those loans, fun those loan funds too. Um, whether you're starting your business, you need to do leasehold improvements, um, purchase inventory, um, et cetera. There's a lot of flexibility with that. And we wanna make sure that you have the funding you need to make sure, again, you can keep growing your business. Here's another short list of the loans that I was talking about. The one that I haven't covered there is in, in the middle, the 504 loan. Um, the 504 loan is for large fit, fixed asset purchases. Um, so for example, if you're looking to acquire a building, purchase a building for your small business, um, a 504 may be an option for you. Uh, you have to at least have the business in at least 51% of the building um, to be considered for the 504. But what's great about this particular program is that you may only have to put in as little as 10% as an equity injection. Um, so that's a huge savings for small businesses because conventional loans might require 20 to 35% of a down payment where 504 can be as small as 10%. The other benefit to 504, especially in the days of recent years where we've had interest rates changing so much, is that there's a fixed rate for 25 years, up to 25 years. Um, so a lot of value in that particular program. 
like I said earlier, if you're looking for a loan and you, your bank says no, um, you can reach out to the district office. Lender Match is another program that is available on our website at sba.gov. This particular program has been set up to help match you with potential lenders. Um, you go into uh, the website. You answer about 20 different questions regarding your small business needs for the funds, how you're going to use them, providing information about your business. Um, the lender match program then gives about 48 hours um, for you to take a look at lenders that you may be matched up with um, and being able to reach out to them. Um, you know, the inf your information gets generated, goes out to our lenders who are participating in the program, um, and then you can decide whether or not you want to reach out to those lenders. It makes it a little bit easier to connect. Um, you know, we are trying to make sure that small businesses are fitting with legitimate lending institutions. Uh, we don't want somebody to get into a situation where they've um, acquired an online loan and interest rates are 30 percent or more, um, you know, and take advantage of the small businesses. So this is just another avenue to connect you with lenders um, that are legitimate and have the opportunity to provide you with funding. And I think... Oops, I'm going to jump over to see what other questions we had here. Okay. Um, Are there networking events in Philadelphia suburbs through SBA? Um, we don't technically host networking events. Um, a lot of times we work with our partners and then other economic development um, organizations um, like EMSDC to do events and so forth. So we are more likely to be at an event um, hosted by somebody to have information at. So we are out there. It's just a matter of what type of event you're looking for. Like, for example, today I'm actually at a small business conference um, where I have a table with information, um, some networking, but also some education to it. So that's typically where we're at when we're out in the field. So hopefully that answered that question for you. Oops, I'm sorry. I hit the wrong button there. get back here. Okay. You guys see my screen again? Sorry about that. Um, just in the interest of time, I'm not going to go into all five C's of credit, but just so you know what a lender or a lending institution is looking for when you go for funding, um, you know, what this is referred to as the five C's of credit, and you'll hear it from any loan officer. One, we're looking at character who you are as a person, what um, knowledge of the industry you bring with yourself, work history um, and, and credit as well is thrown into this. Um, cash flow, um, you know, whenever you're working on a business plan, um, there's also cash flow projections. So you, to me, the cash flow projections are the most important part of the business plan. What a loan officer is looking for is that you actually are able to pay the loan back with the proceeds and revenue in your business. Um, so that's very important to make sure that you have good cash flow projections that um, have real life, um, you know, estimates and so forth. They can't be blown out of proportion because a loan officer will see right through that. Collateral, um, you know, we at the SBA, our loan programs aren't based on receiving 100% collateral. There can be a shortfall. Um, but the reason that a loan officer is going to ask you is for collaterals in case you aren't paying the loan back. Um, you know, what asset do we have that we might be able to sell, um, you know, et cetera, if that loan's not paid back. So when it comes to small businesses, um, I always tell people that if you um, have collateral and you share that asset with another individual, you want to make sure that you have this conversation that you're going for a small business loan. Um, and that you might have to put up your house or something like that that you share with somebody else. Capital, um, this is money into your business. Um, let's say you've been in business for three years now. Um, you want to grow into government contracting, so you're looking for a line of credit. A loan officer is going to say, okay, well, let me see how much money have you put into the business, you know, et cetera. Um, if you have receipts that show, okay, for the last three years, I've put $50,000 in, they may not ask you um, to put any more money out before providing you with a loan because you've already 
put your equity injection into the business. Um, if you're starting a business, they're going to want to see that you've risked some of your own money. And conditions, that's industry, um, location, you know, those things surrounding you, um, you know, is the uh, industry um, trending? Is it going up? Is it declining? You know, those are the types of things that a business plan will provide for a loan officer too. Okay. And as I mentioned earlier, um, the SBA, um, you know, I've been here 11 years now. Um, disaster assistance wasn't really something that I covered a lot of um, prior to COVID. Um, during 2020 to through 2022, that's really all we did was COVID and COVID relief um, for different programs. Um, however, outside of a pandemic type of situation, um, for a small business owner, you might want to be aware of different disaster programs that we provide help and relief to um, to small businesses. More recently, um, real life examples, um, uh, when I-95 burnt down, um, a lot of small businesses were affected around that corridor. Um, people either couldn't get to you or the traffic was so bad, et cetera. So there's actually a, a federal declaration um, for um disaster there and we had our economic injury disaster loan available to small businesses um, i'm actually sitting in the city of reading today um, there was a chocolate factory that exploded maybe a little over a year ago now um, on the other side of 422 there was a disaster um, for that as well um, typically we'll see especially now with hurricane season um, tropical storms hurricanes ice storms, flooding, things like that. When there is a federally declared physical disaster, um, SBA will come in and provide um, disaster relief through our economic injury disaster loans. Um, this is actually available to small businesses, homeowners, and renters when there is actual disaster declared. Um, so just keep that in mind. Hopefully you never have to take the opportunity to apply for these types of funds. Um, the good thing is with these particular loans is that they have a 30-year term and a fixed rate of 3.75% for for-profit and 2.75% for nonprofits. So it's a, a low interest loan over a long period of time, hopefully making it affordable to small businesses as they get back up on their feet. And before I break for questions, um, this is just you know how you can reach out to us and stay in touch with us at the Eastern Pennsylvania SBA District Office. Um, we are currently you know getting onto LinkedIn. We've been only there for a couple of months, but we're very good about posting upcoming events, um, not only ours but our partners as well on our LinkedIn page. Um, you can always reach out to us at the District Office for additional information, um, and also you know there's a great SBA resource guide available. Available at that at this link. I will send my presentation over to EMSDC so that they can send this out to anybody who is on today. Um, you know, and with that, I will go ahead um, and stop sharing and open it up to any questions that somebody might have who's joined us today. There was one. I'm looking to construct a building. Is 504 loan a way to go? What is the typical timeline for this process? Um, well, I can't say that 504 is definitely a way to go. It's a consideration. Um, it is a, a loan um, product that's available for people who are constructing um, a building. It is an option for you. What I would say is take a look at the information online. Um, and see with approval for it, it could take, you know, 30 to 60 days, but that's depending on how the paperwork comes in. Um, but, you know, to be approved for an SBA loan, whether it's 7A micro loan or 504, um, you know, it's done, you know, pretty much within 30 to 60 days, as long as, like I said, everything's together and sent in on time. Um, but for a 504 loan, you would work with one of our, um, Certified development companies, our CDCs, they're our fiscal agent for the 504 loan. They would take a look at what your business plan is, um, your cash flow projections, your project information, and provide you with what a 504 would be able to do for you. Um, there's also a state program, PETA, um, so that might be an option for you. And I always tell people to check with your local county. Um, there might be other loan programs available for you as well. 
There is a question in the chat. Um, it says, do you offer any help for minority wholesale liquid distribute liquor, excuse me, distributors, importers, or exporters? Um, so we would provide it, um, help for exporting. Uh, we don't provide, like at the SBA, we don't provide for importing because we want U.S. products to be exported. We don't want other countries bringing their country in. We're small businesses in the U.S., so we're support supporting them. Um, but through the Department of Commerce, um, the World Trade Center, they'd probably be able to provide you additional information on importing products. Any other questions? That was a great question, and I was about to tap in and We'll make sure that we mentioned that we are partners with the World Trade Center in Philadelphia and Allegheny County. So if you guys have any time to join us during Med Week, we will be hosting our Hispanic Research Fair with the We Bank and um, the Welcoming Center here in Philadelphia. So if you're interested in learning about more resources in regards to um, those that have been shared at that event, please check out the, um, the registration. Also. Just so that I wanted to thank him for, for one. <laughs> it was an abundance of information. So I usually like get in the chat and make sure I'm asking questions, but making sure you guys, you know, um, have the information that was shared. We'll probably be sending out some recap information. I'm sure Meg will be sending out some links. Um, but just making sure you're taking advantage of the resources that was shared underneath the SBA Thrive program, um, local programs like SCORE, SBDC. Um, all of the information that was shared for federal government contracting, um, the, the weekly sessions that they have every third Thursday, I believe, um, that Kim mentioned. I uh, wanted to make sure you guys follow up on that because I get a lot of federal contracting con um, questions, ADA, Hub Zone certifications, anything that you guys listen to today. Um, if you need more information, just follow up. We'll be happy to give you the direct link to apply for some of this information. So. Um, for some reason, I cannot see any questions that are in the chat, but thank you for that last question in regards to importing and exporting. Um, we will be working with the World Trade Center. They will be at the conference too on October 3rd. So if anybody haven't had the opportunity to sign up, we have a lot of conversations in store um, in regards to channel partnerships so that you'll be able to take advantage of subcontracting with some of our prime contractors within the region. Um, so let me see if I was able to capture anything else directly for Kim before we let her go. Thank you, Rosita, for joining us and thank you. And I wanted to tell you guys that we did have another conversation that talked about some funding opportunities with the SBA. So we will be scheduling that session with Kim. So just follow up with us in a couple of weeks so that you'll be able to take advantage of that info session. Um, and I don't think I see anything else. Brittany, did I miss any other questions here? I don't um, see any questions further in the chat. Okay. Um, but there we go, guys. Thank you again for joining us. Um, we'll be looking forward to connecting with you guys soon. Hi, you're welcome. What's the contact info for Kim Stout? Um, Kim, if you wanted to put the email or web address in the chat, mm -hmm. if you guys have any questions, you could direct them to me or Meg. We'll tag Kim in, but there's Kim's information right there. You're. I was trying Aaliyah's to figure out if we technical lost technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if we lost Aaliyah or me. I wasn't sure. <laughs> no, um, mm -hmm. but I'm. I'll fill in for her. Um, so you know, thank you, Kim, for uh, you know, doing the session for us. This is our Road to Roar series. If you aren't aware, we are having our Roar conference. Next week, this week, we're providing free series to kind of get you prepped for our Roar conference. So if you have not done so already, please register. And as Aaliyah just mentioned, we will be scheduling some more content with um, Kim and the SBA um, in the future. So please feel free to, you know, keep up, um, keep yourself updated and, you know, look, be on the lookout for that information. Um, Rosita, I will drop Aaliyah's email into the chat. I see your um 
see your comment here. So I'll jump that I'll drop that in right now. Thank you, Kim, so much. <laughs> thank we'll you. Be, Thanks for having me. Yeah, we'll be uh, definitely in touch soon. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. If you have any last-minute questions, I'll stick around just in case. Um, but if not, you know, we'll catch you tomorrow on our next Road to Roar session. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Okay.